today's uh, discussion is going to have to do with something a little different, but it still has to do with giving you a Gitmo update. Except we're going at it in a little bit of a different direction because there are so many things that kind of intersect peripherally. There was a report that was put out a couple of days ago by the New York Times called Biden's Final Order on the JFK Files Raises Suspicion. The reason I'm going over that today is because there have been a multitude of things coming out about the CIA and the FBI over the years in Gitmo, on the record, that also have quite a few things, and they all seem to um, have a similar sound to them. So I'm going to discuss it after I read this article to you. So hold on. This is going to be a short video. If you do like the video, please like it. If you aren't a member, please become a member. And hold on while I share my screen. Okay, I'm taking you first off to the uh, CVine website, that's c-vine.com, c-vine.com. And this is where we have all of our Gitmo updates and various different things going on with Gitmo and roundtable discussions, bringing quite a few people in. And so you could also see here that we have a section, I am going to bring this up to you, for Gitmo travel donations and Gitmo reporting and so on. It would be very helpful if you would choose to donate. We depend on this in order to be able to get quite a few things done along with doing the website. And you can become a member. Everything on here is free. There is no paywall. But again, we request if you are so inclined and would like one of our newsletters that we send out a couple of times a week to become a member and we will send that to you. Okay, so let's go ahead and you can see some of the other things. By the way, before I go on, there's another report on here. If you haven't heard it yet, and I have done a video uh, that is posted about a sweep of commission cancellations and prison COVID outbreaks. So it's, it's really heating up. This is why it's important that you pay attention to today's report because it does coincide with other things. Okay, so today's report, Biden's final order on JFK files raises suspicion. The following report below was released by the New York Times on July 24th. I included here today for roundtable discussion purposes that is conducted in the attached video, which is what I'm doing right now. Please do your commenting and so on in the comments below, because this is going to be something that people are going to look at and, and discuss. So please interact. We need you to do this. All right, July 24th by Peter Baker of the New York Times, Washington. On June 22nd, 1962, an intelligence official drafted a memo summarizing a letter intercepted between Lee Harvey Oswald and his mother. The memo was made public long ago, but for 60 years, this name of the letter opener was kept secret. Now it can finally be told, according to an unredacted copy of the memo released recently by the government, the official who intercepted Oswald's mail for the CIA in the months before President John F. Kennedy was assassinated was Reuben Efron. And that means what exactly? A tantalizing clue to unraveling a complicated conspiracy that the government has sought to cover up for decades? Additional proof that the CIA knew more about Oswald than initially acknowledged? Or a minor detail withheld all this time because of bureaucratic imperatives irrelevant to the question of whether Oswald was the lone gunman on that fateful day? The mystery of Refron, who has been dead for three decades, may never be resolved to the satisfaction of some of those dedicated to studying the assassination. Thirty years after Congress ordered that papers related to the killing be made public with limited exceptions, President Joe Biden has declared that he has made his final certification of files to be released, even though 4,684 documents remain withheld in whole or in part. 
Going forward, agencies will decide any further disclosures that may be warranted by the passage of time. Biden's certification issued at 6.36 p.m. on the Friday before the long July 4th holiday weekend, when it would not draw much attention, has frustrated researchers and historians since still focused on the most sensational American murder of the 20th century, but they suffered a setback on June 30th when a federal judge refused to block Biden's order. Jefferson Morley, editor of the blog JFK Facts and author of several books on the CIA, said the belated identification of Efron indicated that intelligence agencies still had something to keep from the American public. Why did the name stay secret? If they hid this guy's name for 61 years and they're still holding other stuff, I would say they're still hiding sources and methods around Oswald, Morley said. Why else did the name remain secret for 61 years? The CIA is trying to slam the door now and Biden's long gone along with all of this. From the other side of the spectrum, Gerald Posner, author of Case Closed, a 1993 book, concluded that Oswald killed Kennedy on his own, said he doubted there was a smoking gun in the remaining files. Everyone is focused on the CIA documents still withheld, he said. What we have learned from the CIA files released this year is that they have have nothing to do with the assassination or they're only tangically related. Although he and Morley diverge on the historical evidence, Posner agreed that Biden's decision was an abrogation of responsibility under the 1992 law mandating the documents released. Trust in the government being what it is, he said the public will never accept official reassurances that there is no stunning revelation in the papers. I don't think that's there, he said, but you'll only know when you have all the files available. The intense interest in Kennedy conspiracy theories prompted Congress to pass the 1992 law mandating that the documents related to the assassination be released within 25 years, except those that could do identifiable harm to national security that outweighs the value of disclosure. When the deadline arrived in 2017, President Donald Trump, who dabbled in the conspiracy theories around the assassination himself, bowed to pressure from intelligence agencies to grant more time. After taking office, Biden signed two memos doing the same. Of roughly 320,000 documents reviewed since the law passed, 99% have been disclosed, according to the National Archives and Records Administration. But 2,140 documents remain fully or partly withheld as a result of Biden's action, officials said, while another 2,502 remain withheld for reasons outside the president's purview, such as court-ordered seals, grand jury secrecy files, tax privacy limits, or restrictions imposed by people who donated papers, and 42 for a mix of both. A vast majority of excluded documents have actually been released, but with certain parts redacted, officials said, including names of people still living, addresses, Telephone or secure, social security numbers or locations of intelligence facilities. Officials said they were confident that none of the withheld information would change the essential understanding of the assassination. The Mary Farrell Foundation, already suing the government over the file, sought an injunction against Biden after his latest order. But U.S. District Judge Richard Seberg rejected it and dismissed other parts of the original lawsuit, although he allowed some claims to proceed. Simply unfathomable. Lawrence Schmoff, a foundation lawyer, denounced Biden's action. It is simply unfathomable to me that a man who has a bust of RFK in his office and who voted for the law would cave in to the incredulous claims of national security bureaucracy that 60-year-old records pose, such as a risk to natural, national security that cannot be released, he said. As it happens, Efron died November 22, 1993, the 30th anniversary of the Kennedy assassination. His wife has died too, and he had no known children. People say there's nothing significant in these files, Morley said. Bingo. Here's the guy who was reading Oswald's mail, a detail they failed to show until now. You don't have to be a conspiracy theorist to think it's suspicious. 
Okay. That is something in and of itself to discuss. Everyone is beyond sick of, you know, this is over 60 years, still not having everything released, although more and more that is released is uh, still raising eyebrows. But this should give you just a little bit of a hint of the proverbial playbook on how things go and what's going to happen with 9-11. Because I watched since 2019 and Fort Meade, while I watched the various uh, Gitmo trials, especially for KSM et al., the 9-11 trials, this uh, similar thing going on where the defense needed certain types of information, um, and things to be able to move forward with, and it was very similar circumstances. Also, on top of it, I am bringing this up on uh, the Gitmo trials of KSM et al. On January 2020, the defense team led by Cheryl Dorman, Borman, excuse me, had gone over uh, a multitude of quite a few idiosyncrasies, uh, shenanigans, uh, flat out legalities that is all on actual record in the transcripts of KSM et al. January 2020. Those are the uh, the actual pretrials that were still going on at that time that lays out years of similar things. Okay. I reason I am bringing this up to you because I know we're all sick of this, but you can't let it go because this is exactly, in my opinion, what they're trying to do. They're trying to bore you. They're trying to divert your attention everywhere else, except for the one place that if you don't pay specific attention to, they're going to continue doing this type of thing over and over and over again. So it's just a matter of trying to get this to court to open things up so we can look at things. And it's continuously ongoing, a saga of many, 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 many years of excuses and reasons and always good reasons why it can never move forward. It's still the fruit of what's happening, no matter what the excuses are or the coincidences. Okay, and then after that happened in January 2020, uh, uh, Cheryl Borman in 2022 was brought up under investigation because of they didn't say why exactly, but this is the lady that was releasing all that stuff and laid everything out in front of the judge, Judge Shane Cohen in 2020, who said that if he found out if even a fraction of this was true, he was going to be throwing the entire 9-11 KSML uh, case out of court. I'll give you an idea just how serious it was. Well, a couple of years later, Cheryl Borman was up under investigation. They have not released why. She had to quit. And now the KSM et al. trials are under plea deal behind closed doors. Okay, so nobody can see it. And in the meantime, the Canastraro report came out where the defense, the Office of Military Commission's defense investigator came out with an incredibly damning report that actually, uh, it appears to be a leak because I was told that it was actually uh, classified that was released. So if you have not read the Canastraro report, it pretty much not only backs up what came out in January 2020, but has a number of other things along with signed affidavits from quite a few other former CIA and FBI agents, you know, in the uh, some senators and so on. So you want to read that. Things are coming to a head, and this is just having to do with this. Now this report is coming out. When I went to the JFK Museum, Oh, my goodness. I guess it was a couple years ago now. And I saw all the various documents that were on the wall and explaining what was going on. It was like being in an echo chamber of just similar play. And also, as a side note, before I sign off here, there is a book written by Bill Cooper called Behold a Pale Horse. And it's a very thick book. But it was written in the early 80s. He was a former uh, Navy Intel officer that uh, released a number of things that he was aware of and what was going to happen over the next years. 
And every single thing so far that he has uh, foretold, which was not because he predicted it, is because it was written down and planned, has happened. The only thing left over are the alien invasions. That, But that is from that book. If you want to look at that and know what's coming, they specifically state in there, he says, from the files of who exactly assassinated JFK. But that's allegedly, of course, there's no court of law. But if you are interested in reading that. So as things continue to move forward, again, do not be diverted. Keep on looking at these things that have been going on for well over 50 years and continue to be repeated and many lives lost and destroyed in the ongoing saga, especially where we are at right now. So it's just a matter of what are we going to do? When are we going to stand up and say no more? No more. It's up to you folks. I'll be back with my next report. Stay tuned.